the number one team in Northeast Ohio, as well as the number one team in the first AP poll of the season, the St. Ignatius Wildcats overpowered the Menor Cardinals and quarterback Mitch Trubisky Saturday night, 48-21, to as the Wildcats went on to win third straight game starting the season 3-0. and It's the SIBNs across the table. Greg Zeiden and John Fanta here with you. We had the call on Saturday night, and Greg, another impressive performance by the Wildcats and let's start on the defensive side of the ball. The trifecta that has become Tom Fanning, Scott Arthrell, and Brian Fisher in the secondary, the defense as a whole, was excellent. Really, John, when you look at the defense, you could go on and on and on about how many different players are making impact performances for that Wildcat defense, but sticking to the secondary members you mentioned, Tom Fanning, a very good night against Brandon Fritz, you know, had one or two big passes that he gave up, but he was solid. Scott Arthrell able to get another big interception, and then Brian Fisher gets two interceptions against Menor. Really had a chance at a third one. He had a third one that he dropped, but to hold Menor's offense the way the Wildcats did, to hold Mitch Trubisky to around you know mid thirties for completion percentage is amazing. The Wildcats coach Chuck Kyle was so pleased earning his two hundred and ninety third win on Saturday night, and this Wildcat defense complimented each other, and then they went to the offense, and not only do the Wildcats have an excellent rusher in Tim McVeigh, but it is also the lethal wide receiver core, as well as Mike Lamana, and the southpaw slinger has been outstanding the first three weeks of the season. That he has, and he really is spreading the ball around to all those different receivers, game by game, different guys are having big performances. We've seen Connor Hennessy have big games, Rocky Zingali, Mike Saragusa. We've even seen Jack Lavelle and Jack Highland have some nice performances. It's really, you know, Mike Lamana can, it seems like, just go wherever he wants, whenever he wants. Right now he can. Lamana had a little bit of pressure on him early in that ball game, Greg, and this just shows he had gone to Connor Hennessy, flipped it over to Rocky Zingali, but Michael Saragusa was in a matchup which Jalen Dowdy and some of the other men or cornerbacks had him covered because they saw him on film. Lamana threw it up into the air, and for 35 yards, Siragusa leaped up and made a fantastic catch. And this just shows it's also the wingspan, the physical endurance and agility of this wide receiver core because they really have some good muscle on them. They are, and that play really exemplifies it because Saragusa was basically being boxed out by the corner. He jumps over his, you know, jumps over him, reaches over his shoulder, and takes away what really probably should have been an interception. And it's nice when you can have receivers making those kind of plays. So the Wildcats flew by the Cardinals early on, and Mitch Trubisky tried to battle back in the third quarter, but you could just see his expression at the end of the game. He had been beaten. They have to get back and look at the film, and Coach Steve Trevisano knew that as well, and he understands. Menor is a program, Greg. They'll be right back in the OHSA playoffs once again. That offense, they are tough to handle because even in the third quarter, Menor, Menor got that to a 16-point game. Yeah, Menor was able to put up two fairly quick scores in the third quarter to make it interesting, but after that, the Wildcat defense just really kept putting the pressure on. We saw, we got to mention the defensive line and linebackers, the two outside linebackers. C.J. Hag and Kyle Berger were in Trubisky's face all night. And middle linebacker Nick Chappick was blitzing sometimes. He was in coverage, did a good job with that. The defensive line held their own. They got pressure of their own. And then when you can hand the ball mm -hmm. off to Tim McVeigh as many times as the Wildcats did to really run out the clock towards the end, that helps. Tim finishes with 217 rushing yards, 33 receiving yards. So 250 yards of offense for Tim McVeigh. And that's just how many weapons the Wildcats have. That 73-yard touchdown run that vamped up the Wildcats' offense off Damian Willis's outstanding block where he cracked right through the right side of that offensive line, which that offensive line as well. Willis stretched out and made a great block, but that offensive line also, I think it's very underrated the way that they have improved throughout the first couple weeks of the season, and they're off and running as well. That they are. We really haven't seen Mike Lamont under much pressure as far as the run blocking goes when Tim McVeigh is able to go over 200 rushing yards. I think that tells you all you need to know about the run blocking up front and give the fullbacks credit for that as well. But the offensive lines look solid. So we have the first of a couple road trips here in the next two weeks, both to Erie, Pennsylvania. The Wildcats will first take on Erie Strong Vincent. And the Colonels come in here, Greg. It's a team that runs the wing T offense, which is an older offense for sure for all of those that are watching that are over the age of 50, I would say. That's back a long time ago when the wing tee was very popular, Greg, and we're going to see it this Saturday. 
That we are. It is their base offense, so that means they're going to be running the ball quite a bit. They do pass. They're not quite Youngstown Cardinal Mooney, but they like to run the ball, and they have had, as we'll get into, their fair share of struggles this season. We're not trying to make you feel old here, but this wing T offense, you got to dust it off a little bit because Erie Strong Vincent, they tried to run it effectively, and the Colonels are going to try to come out and have some replays offensively, try to fake this Wildcat defense out. But, Greg, the Wildcats, by looking at this matchup, they have the clear size advantage here. Just by looking at things, even before we go ahead on paper, the Wildcats are a stronger team physically. Yeah, and I think that'll really make itself known Saturday. I think that'll be, you know, one of the first things you notice. But, you know, looking at the game, obviously if you're the Wildcats, you can't overlook it. You still have to show up to play Saturday. You're not going to win just by getting off the bus and walking on the field. However, it is a matchup that the Wildcats should be able to take advantage of, and they really should be able to get some good work in for the second and third string guys and, you know, in preparation for McDowell the next week. I talked to offensive coordinator coach Steve Foyne. He said, let's take care of business here. And it's also another way in which the Wildcats can try to toy with some of their backups, work them into the game as well, see what they have there, and they do have a lot of depth. So that's also a good thing to see as well. Work in the bench, see other things, try some new things too to get ready for bigger opponents along the way, but certainly take care of business, Greg. You don't want any scare. Exactly. That's what the Wildcats coaches are really going to be stressing. And we look at what they've done so far, John. Three games, the Wildcats have gotten off to fast starts in every single one of them, so you would expect them to be able to do the same thing. It's not a given, but if they can do what they've done the previous few weeks against Strong Vincent, they should have a good win. So we will be with you live at 1.30 with the Prudential Lucian Realty pregame show. And then 2 o'clock kickoff comes at you. Not only will we have the kickoff, we'll update you with all the fall sports as the soccer team plays Saturday on Wasmer here, as well as they take on the Hudson Explorers. So the soccer team sits at 7-0 and right now, Cleveland Heights and Hudson this week as well. We'll update you with everything cross-country and golf as well throughout the broadcast. And come with us. We'll be live video from Veterans Memorial Stadium and hope to have a lot of fun on Saturday afternoon, 2 o'clock. Greg, we hit the road for the first time. We do, John, and we'll enjoy it so much that we're going to go back and do it the next week to Erie again. <laughs> so it should be a good one. That's what we're hoping. 1.30 for Net Solution Realty pregame show, 2 o'clock kickoff. Greg and I, we will see you there.